Lord Dyson, Lord Lester, Lord Hunt, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome to the International Conference on Media Law and Policy. I'm Johannes Chen, uh, Dean of the Faculty of Law at the University of Hong Kong. So may I first extend a very warm welcome of every one of you uh, to the conference. I would like to extend also a particularly warm welcome to all our overseas guests, uh, whether they are in Hong Kong for the first time or uh, the numerous time they've been visitors. Uh, welcome to Hong Kong and to the university. And apart from enjoying this intellectually stimulating conference, we hope that you also have time to enjoy uh, this uh, fascinating uh, and dynamic city. Uh, let me also apologize for the slight delay uh, this morning. Uh, it's entirely our fault that uh, we make a mistake uh, to uh, pick up our uh, one of our keynote speakers this morning and went to the wrong place. Uh, we almost lo lost, uh, lost Lester, and I'm glad that uh, he made it. Uh, and indeed, uh, the the origin of this conference uh, stems from a conversation I had with Lord Lester uh, at the lobby of Mandarin Hotel more than a year ago, uh, and that small talk uh, ended up in a large conference of this kind. Uh, and over the years, uh, I particularly like to thank uh, Lord Lester uh, for his guidance uh, and advice over the organization of this conference uh, and his help in bringing a very distinguished speakers and panel speakers to this conference. Uh, and I would like also to make a special welcome to uh, Lord Dyson and Lord Hunt for joining us uh, despite your very busy schedule. Uh, this is another excellent collaboration between the Faculty of Law and the Journalism and Media Studies Centers of the University, as well as the Media Defense Southeast Asia. I have the benefit of aliasing with colleagues from the Media Defense Southeast Asia for quite some time. It is the first time I really meet them in person, uh, and that explains the internet world. We tend to know a lot of people without ever meeting them in person. Uh, and also a conference of this kind would not be possible without the generous support of our sponsor. And I would like to thank Open Society Foundations uh, and Conrad Atia Siftung for their very generous support. Uh, and of course, needless to say, a conference of this kind requires the efforts of a lot of people working both before the scene and behind the scene. And I would like to thank uh, Professor Ying Chen, my colleagues uh, from the Center of Media Studies and Journalism, uh, Professor Dorian Vincent House, uh, my colleague Professor Simon Young, uh, and uh, Professor An Jung, and all the other administrative staff who have been working tirelessly behind to make this a successful uh, event. I think about 20 years ago, uh, I was on one occasion uh, offering a lift to the late Mr. Justice Charles Ching to the court. Uh, at that time, there was a very serious matter in Hong Kong about car theft. Uh, any car which is popularly demand across the border will just disappear like that. Uh, so when I parked the car at the court uh, and put on the car lock, uh, Charles uh, looked at it uh, almost contemptuously and said that, Johannes, these things can be broken uh, within three seconds by any professionals. And somehow, a couple of months ago, we have almost the same message in a very different context from American who happened to be in Hong Kong, uh, telling us uh, whatever security you put on internet that can be broken within seconds. Uh, Mr. Edward Snowden told us about the prison project the prison, uh, and, and told us uh, and the world that internet information is systematically, systematically monitored uh, all over the world. Um, it gives a new dimension of privacy means uh, in the internet world. Uh, it gives a new dimension of what free speech could mean. Uh, and it could not be a better time to reflect on internet and free speech and how free is free speech. Uh, and in the name of national security, uh, we are reminded uh, that in different parts of the world, there are constant surveillance and monitor uh, of information across the border. Uh, and in many jurisdictions, innocent speech can still from time to time be turned into a crime. At the other side, uh, in internet invasion or privacy invasion is not a sole privilege uh, of the government. Uh, with the advances in technology, media intrusion is of increasing concern. In opening the Levison inquiry, uh, Lord Levison said, and I quote, the press provides an essential check on all aspects of public life. That is why any failure within the media affects all of us. At the heart of this inquiry, therefore, may be one simple question. Who guards the guardians?" Unquote. The question remains pertinent today, as it was at the time of the Levison inquiry. The Law Reform Commission in Hong Kong has previously proposed the introduction of a self-regulatory mechanism for invasion of privacy by the media and a new thought of invasion of privacy, 
both reports have been shelved and it's probably likely to be shelved forever. Uh, at the same time, defamation law has undergone major changes in the UK, Australia and other parts of the world. We can't have a more timely conference and we can't expect a more distinguished panels of speakers than we have today. With that remarks, I wish you all the best and look forward to an intellectually stimulating conference. Thank you very much. Good morning, everybody. Can you see me here? Um, distinguished guests, colleagues, and friends, welcome to Hong Kong U. Uh, to those of you who have traveled from afar, a special welcome to Hong Kong. I'm sure you will defeat jet lag because you're such magical people. Um, the Johnson and Media Study Center is most honored to serve as your co-host at this remarkable conference. The conference is remarkable, or even as, as I dare say, historical, because in this room today, we have gathered the top legal egos from around the world. And we are here for the single purpose of seeking media law reforms in Hong Kong, China, and the region. Over the next two days, we'll take stock of the good, the bad, and the ugly, and the promise of media law developments around the world. At the Johnson Media Study Center, or the JMSC, media law has always been a required course for our graduate students and our undergrad students as well. Our students cannot graduate without passing Doreen's media law course. They read original decisions um, and write reports on cases um, and they called it the torture chamber. She'll explain why. So um, the media law project, also led by Doreen, is also one of the, is the first special project at the JMSC. So over the next two days, we're counting on you, distinguished legislators, scholars, to shed light on dark corners of the law that limits our freedoms. We'll count on you to show us a way to expand our space for freedoms in the real and the virtual world. With the collective intelligence in this room, I'm sure that we'll be able to solve all the legal problems of the world. And I count on you to save journalists of the world from jail. We're particularly excited um, because we have participants coming from at least 15 jurisdictions Australia, Canada, New Zealand, Thailand, Indonesia, Malaysia, Singapore, Philippines, Hong Kong, Vietnam, Burma, Cambodia, the United Kingdom, United States, and mainland China. Joining us is a group of distinguished lawyers, legal scholars, and journalists from mainland China. I think they're sitting somewhere over there. Much is happening across the border under the new leadership of Xi Jinping. We're eager to hear from you the latest developments. We also want to give a special welcome to our friends from Southeast Asia. I think they're here. Uh, Dipendra, where are you? The, Dipendra, yes, is there. Um, five years ago, we held our first media law conference at this university. Out of that conference, the Southeast Asia Network was born, and our friends have traveled far with it. Over the years, network members have conducted court observations, provided legal advice across borders, and more. We have won small victories, but we also suffer setbacks. This conference will allow us to share experiences and brainstorm to map the road forward for media law reform in Hong Kong and the region. And I wish uh, also to acknowledge the generous support of um, Open Society Foundations and uh, longtime supporter of the GMC um, who make this conference possible. So welcome to Hong Kong, and I look forward to two days of exciting sharings with you. Thank you. <laughs>